O'Brien. What is going on, folks? I'm getting my microphone on. This is where we got to do checks before. How is everyone doing? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'll be with you uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, what do we got taking a look at today? Well, we have the E-mini up right now, about 0.47%, trading at 52.37. The Russell about 2,081, up 0.82%. The NQs up about 0.24%. Uh, the Dow futures up 083 And that gold contract up about 0.91%, still at 2,343. It's not too much movement in it today. Silver actually up quite a bit, 3.06% currently at 28.44. Uh, uh, and then copper at 459, also up pretty decently as well. Crude oil, we're actually getting some move up in it today, off of that $77 area, 77.65, I believe, uh, is where we were trading uh, roughly yesterday. Uh, there's some conversation about energy in general, uh, going to go up in cost. Of course, we had some issues with that gas as well. Uh, of course, this is the crude oil contract, um, so not always connected, but at least for use of energy. You know, you might have some kind of spillover into that. We have Tesla trading down, uh, continuing to test <laughs> that level of support at 172.02. Still dynamics at 134.62. And Disney still in that area. Man, it's just so sad. They did strike a deal, I believe, with uh, Paramount. They're bundling some of their services, especially with Hulu as well. Uh, so hopefully that generate some some decent profitability in their streaming, um, which they're still having a hard time either achieving or maintaining. Uh, one of the big plays of today, which is crazy, is uh, U.S. Cellular. <laughs> Look at that. Up 28.4%. So United States Cellular Corp uh, obviously blew up after a Wall Street Journal report that T uh, released that T-Mobile, U.S. Incorporated, and Verizon Communications are nearing separate deals to buy parts of the telecommunications company. Pretty cool. Uh, T-Mobile would pay more than $2 billion for a portion of U.S. Cellular, according to the report, which cited people familiar with the matter. Uh, that deal could close as soon as this month, uh, while the Verizon deal could take longer or not close at all. The jump by U.S. Cellular triggered at least one volatility-related trading health and <laughs> its stock biggest intraday gain in nearly a year. Telephone and Data Systems Incorporated, which holds about 73% of U.S. Cellular's publicly traded shares, soared as much as 25%. It was also briefly halted for volatility. Uh, I mean, that is pretty nuts, right? Starting around like 30, just right under 36, all the way up to uh, 46, a high of the day of 49.89. Kind of some cool news for the day. Take a look a little bit at arms as well. Excuse me, arm. So down slightly, arm holding shares fell as the chip designer's softer than expected annual revenue forecast cooled. So the enthusiasm around the stock following its AI power jump in recent months. Okay, talk about this because it reminded me, I, I don't know if I was on or I was listening or something like that, but someone was talking about, we had a caller, and they were discussing about this being a bubble, right? AI. And, or, and sorry, it was the chips that was being discussed, right? And they were looking maybe for a potential short in anything in chips. And again, I'm pretty sure they called me and I was essentially like, don't do that right now. My argument was that this is the future. Basil as well, when, you know, he comes on to the show and talks a little bit, he uses some of these semiconductors to kind of determine what the rest of the market's going to do. I think that's actually super intelligent. Uh, very cool. Always learn a lot from Basil. Anyways, the point was, is that this is the future, you know, uh, Chips are going to be in absolutely everything, whether it's in your phones or whether they're using it for AI or whatever. And I will say 100%, I think a lot of capital flowed in to this kind of sector and, and, and things related to it. And I think it flowed very quickly. And so definitely when, when you get something like that, you can kind of get this backwash effect, right? Like, I mean, obviously we're not really off that much, right? 1.84%. What is NVIDIA trading? Just down slightly. Uh... Yeah, just down 1.5. I, you know, not everything is going to be, not every earnings is going to be like stellar for these, right? But the point is, is that these kind of companies and this technology isn't going anywhere. It is going, it's here to stay. And so even when you get some, you know, rough things going on, um, 
you know, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Let's talk a little bit about this. I think on the long term, at least. And I, I really, I really defend that idea. So let's talk a little bit. Obviously, at a high right here of 164, slight move down in April, continued to come down. Let's uh, look a little bit. So the stock fell as much as 8.5% before pairing some of its losses to trade 1.5% lower. And again, that's, you know, <laughs> the market can sense that, right? I mean, that was a buying opportunity. Uh, bets that ARM will benefit from a surge in AI computing have doubled the chip maker's share price since its initial public offering in September. It's a market value of roughly $100 billion at this level. Uh, this typical case of ARM not being able to live up to the height and expectations, that's what one of the analysts says. Again, I... Again, I think it's slow, but this, this does come out, right? Eventually, this shakes out positively. Uh, let's see here. AI demand will take some time to grow into the revenue mix to absorb that weakness. This is from the smartphones market, which is what these ARM kind of chips are, are for. I know the company's ARM holdings, but an ARM chip is used in computer, or excuse me, in, uh, in smartphones. The UK chip designer said it was expecting full year revenue to be between 3.8 billion and 4.1 billion the midpoint for which is slightly below the consensus estimate of 3.9. Its revenue in March quarter and the forecast for its current quarter, however, came in above expectations. Arm shares trade at 64.68 times. It's 12-month forward earnings, significantly higher than the industry median. And that's kind of that, right? And again, definitely, I think you're going to get, it, to see these like massive run-ups in these companies, it makes sense, right? I, I remember even, it was a few months ago when, Sam Altman wanted what, like, he wanted like 17, no, sorry, $7 trillion to build out these massive factories and, and data centers, which is, you know, roughly 14 times what the current chip market is globally. And people scoffed at that, but the idea is that, like, this, the, the amount of money this kind of stuff can generate going forward, and I'm talking like the development from AI, you need these chips for AI, you need it for phones, whatever, is it, it's going to pay for itself. Now, this is a long-term thing, right? And maybe you don't rush in as much as the market has because they're trying to find some place to put their money at a time where, you know, the stance of the economy is a little bit uncertain. And I'm talking a few months ago to a year ago. Uh, but still, regardless, I, I don't think this is a bubble in the sense that it's going to go away if we have some correction. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.